Kamala. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Oh, hi. You're both together. Oh, it's good to hear you both. I, I, I can't have this phone call without saying to my girl Kamala, I am proud of you. This is going to be historic. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle, Brock, this means so much to me. I am looking forward to doing this with the two of you, Doug and I both, and um, getting out there, being on the road. But most of all, I just want to tell you the, the words you have spoken and the friendship that you have given over all these years mean more than I can express. So thank you both. It means so much. And, um, and we're going to have some fun with this too, aren't we? Well, Kamala Harris has got an endorsement from not just Barack Obama, but Michelle Obama, too. Two of the most influential Democrats in the country. Amazing, right? I wonder how long Kamala's been sitting on this announcement. I mean, I don't think they just announced today. Based on that video, it looks like Kamala's known about this endorsement since the 24th. I mean, unless she likes to recycle her wardrobe. President of the United States and me as the first woman vice president of the United States. And I thank you. And now, in this moment, our nation needs your leadership once again. Same clothes she was wearing in the video. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a sleek way to roll it out. But looks like they may have held it back for different reasons. Some say Kamala may have held back the endorsement because, you know, her team wanted her to get more bang for the buck. I mean, as many endorsements as Kamala had, it's like, why rush them all? Hold one back, the big one, and then run a Boston on them. Okay, fine. Maybe that's it. But see, I tend to think a little bit more uh, controversial. See, I think since Obama pushed Joe Biden old ass out the race, they don't want it to look like he pushed his old ass out the race. You know what I'm saying? So if he'd have came right out, right after Biden stepped out the race, it will look more like, yo, I knew Obama did that to her. That's cold-blooded. So you let it marinate for a couple of days. Then when you come out, you've had time to let your media operatives run the lie, spread the narrative that all of a sudden it came over Joe Biden that he can't do the job. And what's best for the country is to a guy who thought, I don't know, 12 days ago that he could do it, all of a sudden knows he can't do it. What's Joe Biden going to do? Is he going to stay in the race? Is he going to drop out? Here's my answer. I am running and we're going to win. I'm not going to change that. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. Get what I'm saying? If you're still sitting on the fence on that one, let me spell it out for you. Obama stared Biden in the back. Okay? In the press conference. Now all you Dems who love Biden, now go ahead and cry in the car. If everybody else, check this out. Democrats have been talking about this idea that Trump is afraid to debate Kamala Harris. I don't know if that's true, but you know, all I could go on is what he said. Here he says he'd be happy to, to debate her. Trump says he is ready to debate his new opponent and do it more than once. If Kamala Harris does end up being the Democrats' nominee, will you commit to debating her at least one time? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'd want to. I think it's important. I would be willing to do more than one debate, actually. But then there was some pushback in his press release saying, hey, well, we got to wait until Kamala's actually the official nominee of the Democratic Party. Let's listen in to Vice President Harris. So sorry. Previously agreed upon September 10th debate. He agreed to that previously. Now it appears he's backpedaling, but I'm ready. And I think the voters deserve to see the split screen that exists in this race, on a debate stage, and so I'm ready, let's go. Will you do it on Friday? And I guess now, 
since Obama said it is true. <laughs> That's how I know Obama has something to do with Biden dropping out because, you know, you know, you haven't been in convention, so you're not a really official, right? Why would you debate somebody who's not official? But okay, I mean, who's going to replace her? Gretchen Whitmer? Gavin Newsom? Probably not. I think they'll stand in line for 2028. But who needs the base right now? Right now, they're going back and forth in their own stump speeches. We got Trump in the Carolinas saying this. As you know, three days ago, we officially defeated the worst president in the history of our country, crooked Joe Biden. He quit because he was losing so badly in the polls. He was down in every single poll and down by a lot, so he quit. But really, what happened was the leaders of the Democrat Party, in a very undemocratic move, the bosses, they said, either you get out or we're going to throw you out using the 25th Amendment. That's what happened. You know that. So, what, well, you know that. That's what happens. That's what happens. These are nasty people, the Democrats. So we better beat them or we're not going to have a country left. You're not going to have a country left. So now we have a new victim to defeat. Lion Kamala Harris. Lion. L-Y-I-N apostrophe. The most incompetent and far-left vice president in American history. By the way, they did a poll. She was rated the worst vice president in history. I've never seen that poll before, but that's the poll. And we got Kamala in Wisconsin throwing those bows. I was elected attorney general of the state of California, and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. And in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. <laughs> Kamala's racked up endorsements without having a platform. So it appears to me that Kamala's running a race that is a continuation of Joe Biden's policies, which may sound dope and everything, but it also opens you up to all criticism that Biden was getting. Because you're really just Biden 2.0. Well, who cares, right? Because at the end of the day, Kamala Harris raised a whopping $120 million in just what? 72 hours, that's a lot of money. Democrats seem like they don't have any demands for their votes. They just pass the votes out in the form of money. What's that say? See, I tend to believe the people that are not concerned with what Kamala's going to do for their vote are people that don't need government to do anything for them at all. I mean, if you're Taraji P. Henson, you're good. You know, Hollywood people, singers, Beyonce, business people, also, you know, these special interest groups, they really don't need much. And if they do need something, they'll have to pick up the phone and get it from the campaign. But it's the working folks, working class black folks, they're going to have a problem. They're the ones that are looking around and going, hey, I can't live through Kamala. It's great you get to be the first president, but... What's that going to do with me? How's that help my life? Last time I checked, that don't pay the bills. Last time I checked, that doesn't keep my business growing or doesn't give me the money to start a business or doesn't do anything about these grocery bills. I may not know Japanese, but I know working class black folks because I'm one of them. And I can tell you, black people are going to ask at some point, I mean, that's working class black folks, no matter how much you point fingers at us, no matter how much you try to shame us and tell us you better vote for her because she a black woman, we're going to ask a very simple question. What's in it for us? Why should we vote for her? And just saying she black, that's not going to be enough. And you know what else? And you know what? It shouldn't be. Working class black folks 
can't live their lives through Kamala Harris's accomplishments. Though there may be many accomplishments, and that's great for you. Congratulations. We got to live our lives through our bills, through our own personal challenges and struggles, trying to get a business off the ground or trying to get a better job or trying to put away retirement or whatever we're going through, taking care of aging parents, all those things that really matter to our lives. If you go to the Kamala Harris website, you'll see one thing, how to donate money. Yeah, if you didn't know anything about Kamala, there's one thing you're going to learn when you go to her website. That's that she wants your money. There's a slogan, it looks like, and it says, together we can win. Once again, that's dope. Fantastic. I'm glad together you think we can win. But my thing is, how is being together a win for us? I'd update the website or maybe black people, black working people should put together a website. And on that website, we have our own slogan. And it'll be Kamala. Hashtag. What's in it for us? Because, see, we don't have the luxury of just trying to win one for you. They want us to vote for the first woman president just so we can feel good about voting for the first woman president. See, even people that didn't know anything about politics voted for Barack Obama because he was going to be the first black president, but also because they really wanted to end racism. I know it's kooky, right? But see, now we know. Just because you elect someone brown doesn't mean racism gets better. In fact, it can get worse. Because it did get worse. Yeah, the slogan for middle class, working class, hurting class, and people just trying to get in class, it's going to have to be a little bit different than together we can win. It's going to have to be closer to you explaining what's in it for us. How are you going to make us the winners? That shouldn't be a radical idea. Just makes sense. All right, if you're new to the channel, my name's Tim Black. And watch this short video where I tell you a little bit about my community that we're building. It's called Tim Black's Wolfpack. I'll see you on the next one. The Tim Black Wolfpack. We started back in 2014. Folks on the online community wanted to come together to fight back against the garbage that goes on in D.C. We couldn't stay in the politics, so we wanted to do something about it. Didn't know what, but we knew we needed to do something. It hasn't gotten better, it's gotten worse. It's time to ride again. Join us. Wolfpack.